This week in lab, you're going to be using a compound microscope. A compound microscope is much more powerful than our dissecting microscopes. First thing you're going to do is take the compound microscope out of the cabinet, either under your desk or at the back of the room. To do that, you need to use two hands. One hand goes on the arm of the microscope. The other hand goes beneath the base of the microscope. You're going to pick up the microscope, carefully carry it to the bench top, place it down on the bench top carefully in a position where you will not disturb it or bump it during lab. These compound microscopes are used for viewing things such as cells or organelles or bacteria, and as I said, much more powerful than a dissecting microscope, which you might use for larger objects, say plant parts or insect parts. This particular microscope, depending on which lenses you're using, has a magnification of about 1,000x max. The dissecting mag microscopes have only about a 50x maximum magnification. Two advantages of using a compound microscope compared to the unaided eye are the magnification. But in addition to that, and even more important, is resolution. The resolution of the microscope is the ability to distinguish two close objects as two separate entities. Each lens has a separate resolving power. And the resolving power is essentially the shortest distance between two objects at which the two objects will still appear as distinct with that particular lens. So written on the lens, in addition to the magnification, is the resolving power. So as resolving power decreases, your resolution increases. So as the distance that you are able to distinguish two objects as two separate entities, as that gets smaller, that means that your resolution is actually getting better. So you'll be able to see the objects. So both magnification and resolution are two very important concepts when using a compound microscope. Let's just first examine some of the parts of the microscope. When we picked it up, we grabbed it by the arm, and that's at the back part of the microscope. The part down here is the base, and within the base, you have your light source, which is right here. You also have a stage or a mechanical stage because we can adjust it so that uh, our slide is directly under our lenses. You have three different types of lenses. Where the eyepiece is, you have your ocular lenses, which are 10x. In the nose piece, right here, you have your objective lenses, and each objective lens has a different magnification and different resolving power. And in addition to your magnifying lenses, you also have another set of lenses, and this is called the condenser. And the condenser is this round, rotating disc. These lenses focus the light coming up through the light source onto the sample. And depending on what type of microscopy you're using, they will uh, adjust the light source so that it shines onto the sample uh, in different ways. In addition to the objective lenses, you have a coarse adjustment knob. There's one on either side of the microscope. These are for focusing, not for magnification. There's a large knob, which is for coarse adjustment, which you use initially to bring your object into general focus. And then there is the fine adjustment knob, which you use to make finer adjustments to bring the object into final focus. There is also a set of dials connected to the mechanical stage, which move the slide holder back and forth and side to side. There is also a little clip. This is the slide clip, which opens and closes, and it holds the slide in place. There is also a light so the light source switch, which is on the left side of the microscope. It's a small dial, and this turns the light source on as well as adjusting the intensity of the light. 
Okay, so let's put the sample onto the mechanical stage. Take your slide, pull open the slide clip, and make sure the slide is properly seated in this mechanical stage clip. You don't want the clip to be over or under the slide, otherwise when you adjust the slide forward and back or side to side, uh, the slide may not be adjusted properly. So make sure that it is securely held in the clip. Again, notice that one of these knobs moves the slide forward and back, and the other one moves it side to side. So you'll want to have it in a position where you can, uh, it's beneath the lens that you're going to use. You want to adjust the eyepieces. Notice that the two ocular lenses can move in and out. So you can adjust it to the distance between your own eyes. You can also adjust the focus of the ocular lenses by adjusting these diopter rings. And you should check your lab manual, which describes how to actually adjust those if you're having a problem viewing the sample. When you're ready to view your sample, you'll want to click the appropriate objective lens into place. We're going to start with the lowest power lens. The lowest power, power lens gives you the largest field of view. And on this microscope, it happens to be the 10x objective. So we'll slide that, we'll turn the, the nose piece, and we'll click the objective lens into place. Make sure that you hear that click so that it's properly seated. Once your sample is ready, you need to also turn on the light. So we'll go over to the side and turn on the light switch dial, which again adjusts both the intensity and the switch for the on-off for the light. One other thing you need to take notice of is within this condenser lens, there is something called an iris diaphragm. There is a little slider which will open the diaphragm, and if you open it all the way, you get a lot of bright light shining through the condenser. If you damp it down, you get less light. If we're using bright field, which is what we're going to start with, bright field, the background looks bright or light against, and the sample is a dark object against that light or bright background. So you'll want to have the iris diaphragm at the half open for bright field, and you'll want the condenser lens to be set at the zero part. The condenser lens, there's a disc that turns, and you want that disc to be set at zero for bright field. Now you're ready to focus your sample. Start with the coarse focus. Move the stage while looking through the microscope until something comes into focus. Once you see something on your slide, then use the fine adjustment knob inside the course adjustment and make your fine adjustments until it comes into complete focus. You can then examine your sample, make observations, whatever you need to do. And if you want to increase the magnification, you can then automatically move the nose piece, rotate it to a higher power lens. The beauty of these microscopes is, is that they have uh, something called parfocal. They are parfocal, which means that once you have focused on the lowest power, you should be able to rotate to any of the other objective lenses at higher power and still see the object in focus. You should only have to make very small adjustments. And one of the reasons that you start with the lowest power lens is because the higher power lenses are also longer. So if you try to start with those and you, you rotate the nose piece, you're liable to knock the uh, slide with the lens and that's not a good thing. You want to you take good care of these lenses. The other thing you want to make sure you don't do is do not put your fingers on the lenses. Just use the nose ring and adjust it with, without touching the lenses. If you do touch the lenses, we have lens paper. You can wipe them off with lens paper. So once you've uh, got your sample at low power, you could automatically move it to high power and then examine it on high power. If you want to look at a live specimen, you would have to make a wet mount, and I'm not going to demonstrate a wet mount right now, but you can use dark field or phase contrast microscopy. And this is where the phase ring comes in which is in the condenser lens. This ring that moves back and forth is called a phase ring. 
Again, bright field, it's on O, but if you want to use dark field, and in dark field, the background is dark, and the object will appear light. By changing the phase ring to DF, which stands for dark field, you're going to change the way the light is coming through the condenser and shining onto the object such that the object, which may be clear, now shows up against a dark background. You can also use the phase contrast capability. And the phase contrast, there are several different phases. And the phase ring shows phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. And each lens would use a different phase. And if you want to know which phase ring to use for which lens, you would just look at the lens, which in addition to having the magnification and the resolving power on that objective lens, it also tells you which phase ring to use. Now, you all, again, you only use the dark field and phase contrast for live objects, and the object appears bright against a dark background. So let's turn it back to bright field, which is the zero of the phase ring. A couple of things to be careful of are to make sure that you don't accidentally adjust the condenser lens when you're trying to focus, because if you do, you may, may lose the object um, through the ocular lens. You may not be able to see it. So you always want the condenser lens at the top of the microscope. When you're finished, you remove your slide, and you will rotate the nose piece so that there are no lenses over the stage. If you've uh, been doing a wet mount or you've done anything that needs to be cleaned up, you should just clean off the stage of the microscope. You should also raise the stage to the highest position again, and then turn off the light. You're going to roll up the cord exactly the way you found it, because again, these, these pieces of equipment are very expensive, and you want to take good care of them. And if we don't, I'll get in trouble with our technician who's in charge of the microscopes. So coil up the microscope cord. Replace the microscope cover. And then you're going to replace it in the cabinet, again, grasping firmly with one hand to the arm of the microscope, with the other hand underneath the microscope, and carry it back to the cabinet and carefully place it into the cabinet. And that's it. And we'll see you in lab for use of the compound microscope.